Hey everybody. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use an eraser for a technique with a colored pencil project with these beautiful roses. Now you can see here that I have some sort of pale leaves up in the top. I've done most of this project, but I started with leaves that were a lot brighter and I felt like they were sort of competing with my flowers. Whenever I can buy a medium that has a fluorescent range of colors in it, I jump at the chance. I love fluorescence, especially when doing florals. And these whole bean pencils that I got, which are so smooth and awesome, have a nice fluorescent range that I felt like could make these little wild roses really pop. When I went back to do the leaves though, I picked out my colors and I tested them. I always test and I liked the way that they worked with the fluorescent pinks in my roses. And I used the same yellow actually. But when I was finished coloring the leaves, I thought, you know what? It's just too busy. It competes too much with the flowers. And I wanted the flowers to be in the foreground and be the most prominent. So I came up with a great little tip that's easy and takes like two seconds. Or after you have colored an image and maybe you have a little bit too much color. Now what's cool about the whole bean pencils is they're a little bit of a hybrid pencil. So there are wax pencils, there are oil-based pencils. These are a hybrid of the two. And so it makes them really blendable and easy to work with. But it also works great for this technique. I had this sort of warm yellow and then spring green. And then this is a peacock green pencil that makes for sort of a minty combination in the background. I especially love the peacock green. And I thought that that color would look really nice with the pink. I can blend these pencils for a long, long time without getting that hard wax bloom. And so they've been a, a lot of fun to work with. They aren't in most US retailers yet, but I do have a link below where you can get a set of these. They are not cheap, just putting that out there, but no good art supplies are. So when you're ready, one little tip that I have for getting art supplies that I want that are expensive is I use my credit card points. So if you have points on one of your bank cards, save those all up for art supplies. No reason to buy something boring that you need with the points that you get on your gas and whatever else you're buying on your credit card. So I usually just boot those points over to Amazon or to another site to buy a gift card for myself, and then I go spend that gift card on art supplies. You'll see me going back and forth between the colors. This is my favorite way to blend colored pencils, but I'm not really spending a lot of time blending these leaves because of the technique that I'm going to do. I'm just coloring them. Now, the way that I created this scene was first I colored the wild roses with the pencils and I just used three colors on the pencils and I'll have them listed below. And then I colored the background with a black Copic marker, not the special black, just the regular black. But before I did any of that, I took some one inch post-it tape and I masked off a diagonal across the front of the card. And then I took this wild rose and I actually stamped it twice. It's quite a large background stamp, but I wanted to capture certain parts of these flowers and make it look like it was all one big stamped image. So first I stamped the bottom half, just going up to where the masked tape was. And then I flipped the card upside down in my Misty, repositioned the stamp, stamped the top half, and that's how I got the whole background. So then I colored it. Then I took the Copic marker and I very carefully colored black around every flower and every leaf. 
This is a technique that I saw my friend Kathy Rakusen do a year or two ago, and I thought it really made backgrounds pop. People are afraid to use black a lot. I don't know why. I always find that when I feel like something's missing on my card, some value is missing. It's always a dark value. It's always going to be black or a shadow or something like that. Now you can see with the leaves that I've already colored, how bright they are and how they're sort of the same value as my flowers. And it's just competing a bit too much. It's kind of noisy. That's a good word to describe what's going on. But these leaves, I'm doing this in real time. I'm not speeding it up so that you can see that this is actually a pretty quick process. Coloring the flowers was a pretty quick process too. After I removed the mask, when I had stamped everything, actually before I removed the mask, <laughs> when I had stamped the two sets of flowers and the masking tape was still across the front of the card, I took my fine point Sharpie and I went down either side of the tape. The tape gives it a nice barrier so that you can get a straight line. And I just ran that down so that I could get a definitive border for the part that is actually going to hold my sentiment at the end. Before you plan out a project like this, pick your sentiment that you're going to use because it might not fit. <laughs> so if you only have a one inch piece of post-it tape to work with as your mask, then you need a sentiment that is going to fit inside that one inch section. Ask me how I know that if you don't do this, terrible things will happen. Well, not really terrible, mildly terrible. It is just a piece of paper after all. And as you know, my favorite saying is perfection is for serial killers. As a matter of fact, under this video, you can see where I have that. You can get it on a shirt or a coffee mug or a sticker. I thought that some of you might want to have a little perfection is for serial killers stuff in your art room to remind you that that's not a good habit to cultivate, the habit of being a perfectionist. It just ends in disappointment. And to prove that that's how my brain works, I completely forgot that big leaf at the top. Didn't even color it. Just like so excited to do this video. So now this is my electric eraser. And this is the heart of this technique. I know my hand kind of has to be in the way because the motor on this is a little bit strong and it gets away from you and I don't want to erase any of the flowers, but I'm just using the electric eraser to erase the color out of those leaves. It puts them more in the background, brings the flowers more into the foreground, and it takes literally seconds to completely change the way that that background looks. This is such a fun way to alter your colored pencil projects. I do have the disclaimer, however, that because these are a hybrid pencil and you might be working with Prismacolor, you might be working with wax or solely oil-based pencils or something else, that I'm not sure how this works with every colored pencil. What I do know is it works phenomenally with the pencils that I'm using today. And I was so pleased with the pale look of these leaves when I was done. I just thought it was just what this card needed. And I had overdone it with the color in the first place. So here's what the finished card looks like. I think it's really pleasing. I do have a giveaway over on my blog today with some other stamp sets that you might be interested in, like this cute girl, this adorable little jailbird unicorn. So head over to my blog for more details and a chance to win. And thanks so much for watching.